Alexander Forbes released its four-year results today with a 10% increase in operating profit from continuing operation. While the company's chief executive, Edward Keysweater, is with us to unpack these numbers. Edward, thanks for your time coming in, although that you are battling the cold. Back to you certainly weren't battling at this time. You did say the 2014 and 2015 year can be characterized as a year of transition. Just take us through that. Well, absolutely. So just to remember, we came from being privately held and then listed the company in July 2014. Um, and along with that comes um, internal challenges, just keeping the morale. Uh, when we're in transition, generally people um, you know, sense uncertainty. Yeah. And, and we had to do that uh, whilst crunching the numbers in order to make the right decision for the company. Um, I think the transition together with all its attendant um, executive effort but also the cost of that um, when we look back and look at the results we feel quite pleased that given that significant transition uh, returning to the stock exchange uh, we we're able to, pr to post a credible set of results uh, which as, as you mentioned earlier on is 10% um, on trading profit I think what's really really pleasing for me is that that comes off solid growth uh, top-line growth from most of the businesses as you will see in the detail um, and then um, in terms of the drivers for growth um, again that gives us the confidence that this growth has um, sustainability it has annuity effect because it is about members under administration for us it is about gathering assets under advice assets under management and assets under administration and about gross written premium in terms of our uh, core businesses and all of these indicators are for us, fortunately and pleasingly, uh, pointing in the right direction. I think, yeah, a very decent set of results. Congratulations. I think you guys are doing a great job. I mean, obviously, a little bit difficult to compare <laughs> you know, one set of numbers with the other. But uh, may maybe if I can ask which uh, direction. I mean, you, you've mentioned before that uh, you're pushing more into the retail business. Uh, maybe uh, just a bit of color around uh, you know, that, that initiative. And then also, also maybe you know, the market obviously is trading you know, fairly high at the moment. I, I mean, like you mentioned, a lot of annuity income that you guys generate, you know, a very good cash generating business. But uh, what, what about the more you know, uh, market linked businesses I mean do you do you see I know coronation is, is you know getting a lot more defensive in their uh, strategies for clients I mean you guys I mean do you see you know, a, a market sell-off at this time as, as a significant risk to your business let me answer the last part first mm -hmm. so fortune um, absolutely we have exposure to the equity markets but mm -hmm. I just need uh, us all to be reminded that this is a limited exposure mm -hmm. because of asset spreading requirements mm -hmm. uh, we have an exposure normally in the mid 50s mm -hmm. um, to the equity markets um, but in terms of our, uh, our benchmark uh, performing, uh, performer portfolio, there we really have, um, if you look at the large manager watch, uh, we, we pretty encourage that we have, um, uh, in 71% of our, of our portfolios, we have exceeded the, the large manager watch. Um, so yes, we are exposed to the, um, to the equity markets, but our exposure is, not, is unlike some of the, those who have full exposure to it. Mm. Um, but yes, I think it's, it's, it's something that we watch all the time. Um, in terms of, of where we're going, uh, absolutely correct. Our low-hanging fruit, the big thing we've punted now since we've come back to restructure the organization is about driving the retail. Um, and that means selling directly to individuals. And for us, um, what we have done is, um, and we'll make the announcement also publicly, is we've reorganized ourselves around that strategy. So for the first time, we have a retail cluster alongside an institutional cluster. Um, and so, you know, human behavior is, is, is strange. When we try and get people to collaborate simply, it's always harder. We have now f allowed structure to follow strategy, and we are very confident. But even if you look in this transition here, if you look at the drivers for growth in that area, assets under management, uh, under advice uh, for the retail was 17% up. Assets under management, over 14%. Um, and assets under on our platform over 14% growth. So solid growth from those areas. Uh, in terms of our pucker retail business, which is the short-term insurance business, there we have seen 11% um, growth in growth, gross written premium. And if you look at the last three years, that's in fact a 15% CAGR of the last three years. So again, solid performance. We believe that now we have traction. We've made the investment this year, which also somewhat attenuate our retail uh, trading margin, but we are confident that the investment we're making will bear fruit uh, in the long term. 
Edward, being in financial services, we have to talk about regulation. There's been a lot, RDR, treating customers fairly, poppy. How has this impacted you and what are you doing in order to position your business so that this does not impact you negatively? I think the impact is significant. Um, and we continuously engage with the regulators to help them also understand the unintended consequences of regulation. In First of all, the cost of doing business increases significantly for our case, in our case, um, over the last few years, more than 30% uh, on an annual compound basis of growth just for compliance. Um, but that being, that being said, we do believe that the intent of regulation is good and right. It strengthens the sector. And, and what we have done is ensured that the way we implement Poppy TCF strengthens the whole of our business, helps us understand our own risk better so that we also gain from it uh, commercially. And we don't just simply follow a minimum compliance approach. Hello, Edward. Unfortunately, we'll have to leave it at that for today. But thank you so much. Uh, best of luck with the roadshow. And uh, congratulations on a good set of results. That was a big thank you to Edward Keysweater. He's the chief executive of Alexander Ford.